What's up, everybody? We're back, Town Hall Meeting with the Mayor. I'm your host, Eugene Man, Mayor Roberts, and today I got my brother. We traveled the world together. We done played big stages. We done played a lot of notes. Give it up for my brother, the one and only, Mr. Young World. Like I told y'all, I'm always gonna have some surprises, and this one right here is, this is this is dear to my heart, because this is one of the very first people I've ever toured with, and I was a little young scrappy, and he was whipping me in his chase, and his <laughs> yes, chin. Give it up for my big bro, Young World. What's up with you, bro? Yeah, what's up, bro? What's up, everybody tuning in? Uh, thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for supporting my brother and his platform, bro. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor, man. I was excited uh, when you hit me, because you know, you're one of the ones that, like you said, I, I echo that sentiment. You're near and dear to my heart, man, because you meet people along the way and you, you oh, bro, bro, and you get cool, but it's like, yeah. man, we was there from the beginning for a long time. Yeah. So, love you, man. I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Love you too, <laughs> man. So, let's just jump right in. Let's, 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 let's take a little history trip. Let's, let's start here. Let's talk about the importance of us playing parts in the right sounds, especially working under Teddy. Let's just start there. Yeah, I mean, the unique thing about working under Teddy um, is that he's not only the artist when you, you know, sign on to, to, to work for him when you get hired, but he's also the producer, which yeah. is unlike any other gig currently, unless you do have artists that say they dibble and dabble with production. But I'm talking about, you know, man, bonafide producer, arguably one of the greatest of all time, created a whole genre of New Jack Swing. So it was such a hands-on experience. Um, and I want to sidetrack for a minute because I want to be able to speak to the people that's listening to this. When you get with cats like myself or Man Man or anyone who comes from that school, it's not that we're trying to, you know, one-up you or trying to make things difficult. It's that I really believe that thanks to Teddy Riley, we learned the real way to approach music. Because as a musician, he's going to show you what, what's, what, where you can go. But as a producer, he's also going to show you what's just enough and what takes it not too far. And so you're basically yeah. enhancing the record from a sonic sound design point to even your part playing. Okay, you can play this and get away with this alter chord or get away with this, but keep it off. The, you know, he showed us the boundary and the limits of expanding a tune without taking it so far out the vein that now when the paying customer comes, they're like, Okay, wait, what song is this? Yeah, the they want to fall in love and have those memories. A lot of times, if you really pay attention on musicians, your job is to not only make the artists happy, but give the people an experience. They'll leave, oh my God, I went I, to a so-and-so. I, I, so I always, always tell people, do not arrange for musicians. Do not. <laughs> like, that's not. That, that's the person that actually wants a pass to come to the show. You want to get arranged for the person paying for a ticket. It's, it's been times for the people that's listening that let's say man man and i we've been on stage playing let's chill for example and he's playing some sweet stuff i'm playing we're having a conversation and for the musicians on the front row they're doing it but you also get the other thing where you might see a couple slow dancing and they're not even looking at the stage they're just you're giving them that moment you're giving yeah. them that experience and when the artist like teddy or whoever looks out and sees that happening where everybody's on their feet nobody's sitting down people are engaging they're crying they're falling in love now you're coming through. And that starts from uh, having enough respect for the music and for yourself to learn how to play discipline. I mean, it's been hours that Man Man and I would be in there with headphones on, maybe not even speaking to one another because he's over there, I'm over here, and we might stop and get food, but we get back. I mean, we're not headphones off and the monitor's jamming. I mean, we have headphones yeah, wow. on, like literally with our notepads and programming sounds, like being sound maestros and sound gurus. So all of that is, I mean, if you get your own your own trio, your own group, then that's different. But when you're getting hired to play for an artist, your job is to serve that music, for sure. Yeah, what's crazy is I had a a current, it wasn't a challenge, but it put it took me back to the Teddy days is, uh, when I did Chromio. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they play and produce all their stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's electro funk. It's Synthy. It's Junos. It's, yes. you know, it's Moogs. It's like, you know, right. real hardcore Simpson. It's like, we had 30 tunes to learn, you know what wow. I'm saying? And it's like, you know, we grew up knowing Teddy music, at least if our parents was playing. You had some idea. Some, yeah, exactly. But when you got 30 records you never heard of in your life. Yeah. And yeah. it's like real strategic sense. And like, I mean, it's like, oh, you know, no, you know, with the hi-hat, you know, Rashid's an amazing drummer. And they were like, you know, so actually – 
they sent us the songs. It was like 30 titles of the songs. We learned uh-huh. them. Then they sent me 30 Pro Tools sessions, which were different arrangements with no lead vocal. Ooh. Then I put the two track of the iTunes to at least line the vocals up so we would know where we were and at least know where the where parts was moving. Then we went back and learned the music that way. And then once they came into rehearsal, it was like, now we want to hear you guys play how you want to play it. And we're like, like <laughs> So, you know, we had to, like, blend the two, and it would be like, you know, oh, can you just, like, you know, even in programming, it was like, yo, can you pan this one synth two? I'm like, two? Like, wow. when you think it's not even noticeable to the, the ear, it's just like, yeah, all right, like, 0. 0.5 dBs, and, you know, yeah. like, like, real meticulous, and it's like, like I said, that was the biggest challenge I've had in a long time, and not because I couldn't do it, but it was just, like you said earlier, it's very rare that the producer is the actual artist and they really that hands on. Like, and we're not yeah. even talking about just producing, we're talking about the mixing, the, the front of house, the programming, the panning, the you know, the whole thing. The whole thing it stretches yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, in the more recent, I know you've been doing um, the K pop thing, man. That's like, oh, yeah. like, talk about that because that. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I ain't done yet. I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I would love to do a K-pop gig just because it's different. It's different culture. But speak yeah. on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so unknown to us being black Americans. We're like, okay, what's going on over there? And um, yep. I know you were happy for me. We talked offline. But it was a lot of people um, that I hadn't heard from that are up or up. And we would call, like, our heroes, our big bros that came and reached out like yo like that's kind of cool and that's when i knew like okay i don't know if we talked to you but you notice i'm a, it's like yo how do you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's like yo, where you come from oh okay you know but they were so interested and so basically where it came from was years ago i had a manager and and um and i'm only going back here to show you guys the importance of relationships i had a manager who was when I was T.I., Diddy, um, some of the gigs you helped get me on, I, you know, I won't call any of that for your respect out of you, but you, you helped recommend me some, for, for some things and you put me right, right in the chair, which I was thankful for. But so she represented me on a lot of those accounts. And uh, basically we got to a point, her and I, in our relationship where she started growing. She got a reality TV show and her, mm-hmm. her, her, you know, her, her clientele started growing and some of the things right, I did right, personally, right didn't work out. And so I asked her if we can move on, you know, if she could mm-hmm. remove me from her site, things like that. And so because I did it, y'all listen to me because I, I didn't, I didn't get in my feelings. I had OGs that I called and said, listen, I don't know if me and my management is really clicking. What's the best way they, they talk. So that's why it's important to have a big brother to have an OG because they'll talk you off the ledge, especially if it's a yep. veteran, you know, they'll, they've been there before. So someone helped me with that conversation and I presented to her properly in a way that however many years later, almost 10 years later, I was on the road with Keep Sweat coming off stage and she texted me and said, hey, I may have an opportunity for you. And she she was real vague at first because I guess the situation was a little sensitive in terms of what they were gonna do with the guy who was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So she was just soft checking. What's your schedule looking like? Maybe there, maybe there. So a few months later turned in, okay, we'll send your passport just so I have that ready if they need that. Then I think a few months later, she's like, okay, it's an international artist, but she, she was still wouldn't tell me who it was. And then I'm thinking like, maybe it's Nicki Minaj or Rihanna or, you know, yeah. someone here that travels. But I didn't know finally when she revealed, she said, listen, this is a long-term situation in terms of working with this company that puts on these K-pop groups. And basically you sign on with them or you do business with them. And then they put you where the priority is for whatever artists that they have going on. I'm like, wow, that sounds kind of cool. Cause for job security, we're always stuck on what the artist is doing that we're particularly working with. Well, this one was right. almost like if you were getting hired to be like an executive at a label, now you're dealing with all the artists on the label. So that's right, right, kind of right, how right. it is. So I guess uh, before my coming into the band, uh, so, you know, somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody got in contact with four black American band members here from all over this this state. I mean, this this country and got a, a black Pro Tools guy. And they thought that that was the important piece of their sound, having brothers behind them playing, even though it's Korean pop. And mm-hmm. so that's what's kind of made them a little different than some of the other K-pop groups, because they have that energy and that aggression that yeah. we play with as African Americans. And so that made it very particular, uh, very, very particular, but very special. So yeah, I, I had to go through the auditions of sending, it wasn't like a formal audition, but it was like, 
I guess in the show, they wheel out this baby grand piano and the gentleman that was there, he plays and the, the artist sits on the piano. That was a very big moment. So they wanted to know whoever they were bringing in, could they handle that? So luckily, you know, I got the baby grand downstairs. So they was like, hey, let's, can we hear you play some stuff? So I sent the video and the first video, they critiqued it like, oh, can you do something a little more? You know, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. You're looking for that. Cause I played a cover tune. They wanted to hear, no, we're going to give you a spot. Like they're very big in, in Korean pop of letting the artist shine. You get a solo, mm -hmm. we go put the spotlight on you. So I played a pop tune by Queen that allowed me to show my dexterity, but they were like, no, that's a Queen thing. We want something that you could actually play during our show, be creative. Be So I sent them that and it's probably about another week or so, two, three weeks, and they called me and let me know I was in. And um, from there, all the traveling that you and I have done, man, man, all the places that we've been in Japan, the tours we've done with Teddy and things like that, working with a Japanese crew, working with that language barrier of you need okay. things done. You know, we're very technical, but we, yep. we were as kids learning how to communicate with those people from, from where, whether it was we were in J Japan or Iraq or anywhere yep. that we went, we learned how to communicate, you know, with yep. other people. And so they, they didn't know the history. So they're like, oh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a Korean tech, I have a Japanese tech. So, but it's been a journey. It's been a journey, but that's basically how it came about. And um, ever since then, yeah, it's a stadium tour. You know, they tour all over playing stadiums and it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Been great. It's been great, man. It's been wow. great. But that's basically, but that's basically how the inception of it came. And now it's yeah. the fans have embraced me. The companies that you know they they've embraced. I mean, obviously because of COVID, we're a little down, but you know yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get us back working because they have COVID a little more under control than we do here in the states. So it's yeah, more than likely yeah. that we'll go back to work soon, uh, provided that the borders will be able to get out and move around. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But so, it's been a blessing, man. So, so speaking, so now let's tie the past and the present together, and we'll we'll talk about the blessings and curses of the internet. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I mean, you know, we didn't have the, we didn't really have the internet as a crutch. Like we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have. I mean, I was. I think Twitter was just kind of, you know, doing its thing. Twitter and well, back when we first MySpace. started, it was like MySpace. <laughs> yeah, we were MySpace. It, it might have been the early ages of Twitter, but it was definitely just MySpace, maybe Black yeah, Planet. And, was, and and you know, I think people just need to capitalize on it in the right ways and just realize like everything you do on the internet is like a digital resume. Cause like I know a lot of people hit me up like, yo, you know, we need a guitar player for this. I'm like, all right, but what's his Instagram? I'm like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he ain't got nothing crazy up there because this is a female artist. Is he yeah. calling women bees in every post? Like, what is he doing? Like, exactly. you know, and people don't really understand how important that is. So talk about, um, like, I know you've been posting different uh, arrangements for people to learn and just, like, different things you have. I know you, like, I guess, like, quote, unquote, I want to say, like, mentor and you, you mm -hmm. give mm -hmm. – critique their work like talk about that and how important it is how you kind of we had it like we were kind of thrown into the fire but talk right. about how important it is to you know have that person in your life or you know that yeah opportunity. well for the people listening you know like i like i would say um when when, when man man came on with us he was a tech and we were playing now he was already working with john legend's crew but he was you know working as a tech for us because you know, he's, you know, you're just multifacetally talented. And once I heard you play keys, I'm like, man. And Teddy was like, yeah, he's cold, right? I'm like, man. Now, back in that day, though, a lot of techs could play. That was a part, like, you could play because it was like, you you, you know, techs were the guys that just didn't have that A-plus thing. They were like the homies in training. So you bring them yeah. up. And that's important because a lot of y'all are there thinking you want to be ready for the – it's like, no, you would, you would learn as a tech – yeah, but you learn in everything. <laughs> yeah, but obviously what you had was so much more elite, so much more special. But the thing that I noticed was helping you and all of us working together as a family. They were, I mean, from me to Gene to Demetrius to Teddy, yeah. you know, you had so many big brothers in one band that knew the terrain that had been there. And you got a lot from just being around. Um, what I noticed, and I was talking to Valdez about this, nowadays – if you're not around a good coach, you're going to miss all of those stories and all of that upbringing, all that training. Yeah. So you might go to an open call audition. You may not know how to look the part, you know, not know how to play the patterns or it's like a new world of how we've already known. It's a walk of life for us. You guys yeah. come in blindfolded and then you leave like, what did I do wrong? So I don't know. I mean, God has been putting it, the Lord has been putting it on my heart more where 
now with the age of the internet, you can find, I mean, all the greats from the Corey Henry's to the, you know, yada, 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 people that are just playing, you know, bass virtuosos, Chris, Dave and the drum stuff, you can get the different things that inspire you. But what I, I didn't see was people really giving back with the, with the knowledge. And I'm not saying that those guys don't, I'm saying in terms of being able to be on YouTube or Instagram, I felt like, okay, well, out of, you know, the people that are working at this professional level, I want to be a part of the movement of raising my hand and just doing my part to help, which a lot mm -hmm. of the OGs was kind of like, oh, you're kind of giving what, what's special about when they get to the road. I'm like, but a lot of these people nowadays won't get that chance because they there's not even as many road, artists yeah. to even get a job for. I mean, think about when you think about how many artists there are that you can actually, I mean, back when me and you was running, it's like, oh, I'm doing John Legend this week. Or I'm doing Usher this week. And then we come back and do a Teddy gig. And you'd be like, yo, how was that Usher gig? I'm like, how was that John gig? It's not, so I'm, so I'm showing you guys listening that at one point, me, Man Man and I planned for God, planned for Black Sheep, planned for Aaron Hall. He also had John and the Pharrell stuff. I also had Usher and the Chris Brown stuff. We, we had a plethora of gigs within the gig. <laughs> so we would come back and talk about the other things. Now it's like, it's hard, to, especially with the COVID thing. So I was just like, let me try to train and raise and inspire it, not just the cats that are in my roller decks, but the guys that need a shot. And so I started Unknown yeah. Killers, which, you know, it's just almost like a consultation type thing. I allow, I allow guys to showcase their talent. And then constructively, I'll tell them from a music director standpoint what we're looking for or what works, yep. what doesn't work. And mm -hmm. they appreciate that. But that's basically where that came from, that whole idea of just wanting to give back. And so, they, you know, I'll post and show love. And some gigs have came of it. You know, cats hit me up. Hey, who's that? I don't know. He's a young guy. Where's he from? He's from D.C. Oh, OK, we think people have gotten hired. So I think it's important that we continue to. You know, I don't know if people have thought this way, but it's like if you see myself, man, man, cats like that trying to help, don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen overnight. Oh, they're just trying to, you know, uh, shut yeah. But thing. you, but you know me, like that's that's just part of my culture, like especially in Bro, film. Yeah, yes. oh, I'm me. calling, oh, <laughs> I'm calling all the homies. Listen, like between you, oh man, between E Trib, uh, the music director for Black Pink, Omar, he's a Philly boy. Yep. It's like. Well, to be man, honest, man, and I don't even, Blackstone, I mean, listen, Black was calling me for gigs back way back in the day. Like, it's it's just crazy that Philly, man, and I've always used Philly as the staple for a lot of the stuff that I've went through in my personal city, Buffalo, a lot of the things that I've experienced in Atlanta. I'm like, yo, we should all pattern ourselves. I'm not just saying that because we on. I'm saying Philly has done a lot for my career, and Philly has also showed me the way of how to be. It was weird because, like, Philly talked about each other even behind each other's backs positive. See, it's one thing for me to praise you because you're looking at me in my face, man, man. But for me mm -hmm. to be somewhere like, yo, you don't know man, man, he a Philly boy. He I mean, the way you guys support one another is just mm -hmm. stupid. I've seen a lot of people fake jacks in each other's face, but you guys were doing it from afar. Oh, man, you play with such and such on drums? Yeah, he a Philly boy. He a Philly boy. Like, y'all do such a thing yeah, where in yeah, yeah. some cultures, or I'm going to say most cultures, you hear, I mean, he cool, but he it's something negative that yeah. follows. Y'all wasn't doing that. And I'm not saying it doesn't. Man, I've been, I've been, I, but, you know, like, my, my whole thing has just been, even, like, with, with the show, and it's crazy that you hit on it earlier, um, like, I've just been big on relationships. I've mm -hmm. been big on, like, leading with love, like, intentions, like, What's your what's your end goal intention? That's how I know how to deal with you. You know what I mean? And yeah. a lot of people don't even realize. Like some people think down the line, like, all right, you cool right now. I'm talking to you, but I'm fast forward. We through rehearsals, we through production rehearsals, we on the tour bus. Do I like you now? That's how right. far ahead I'm thinking. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? It's right, like, right, like right. that type of thought process, man. So with the Unknown Killers, I know you got the whole Patreon thing going on. So, like, I know what it's about, but let, let them watch and know what's going on with the Patreon and how they can get down and, you know. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm one of those, and this is just a personal thing for me, I'm one of those guys that because of, you know, my 20-plus years in the game, I'm, you know, I'm just getting older, so now I, I'm not as accessible, right? It's like, unless my brother Man Man's throwing something or Black hits me, you know, people that I respect, you know, come through, they already know I'm probably not going to play. I'm going to probably just be in the back chilling, but I'll come through and show support. Um, it's just my way to relax. I probably just got to finish mixing for 15 hours. I probably just got yep. done programming. So I'm not coming to jump on a keyboard. I'm coming just to show my face, but it's very rare that I keep a tight 
tight knit thing. And so for the most part, even that weighed on my heart. And I'm like, you know what? I'm so closed in, whether if I'm on the road in my hotel room or if I'm just at home in the man cave, just, you know, being diligent to my craft. I'm, I feel like, and I don't know, uh, man, man, I've heard you talk about this, but w when we're doing what we do, sometimes we feel like the kid that's stuck in the house that can't go out and play with their friends. Because while John's band is waiting on you to do all the arranging, you actually have to sit down and get it done and right. mix and then meet with him and then get all his edits and revisions. And so while everybody's partying and having a good time, you know, we're the ones, I mean, it's like heavy is the head that wears the crown. So for me, in order to stay sane and keep a youthful thing happening, I also need just my unwind time, whether it's playing yeah. video games, whether it's watching movies. So with that being said, knowing that I'm not the guy that you're going to see at a normal shed or, oh, this yeah. people's in town, Young World's going to be there. No, I'm probably not. So what I did was I just started a movement, a private club that I could commit to that allows me to answer all the questions that a lot of the cats, I felt like there's a language barrier between cats like Man Man and I who have the information and the young cats that need the information or some of the veterans, you know, meaning you've been playing for a while, but you just, you're not a professional in terms of working yeah. in that lane. There's a language barrier because if you're old on your instrument, meaning you've been playing a while and you didn't get opportunity, you kind of feel embarrassed. Like, oh, I'm getting a little old. Ain't nobody going to play with me. And then if you're young, and you feel like, yo, these old heads ain't trying to look out and all this other stuff. Yeah, 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 so yeah. those that are brave enough, I check my Facebook, I check my Instagram. I was like, wow, a lot of these cats are asking the same questions. Or I noticed I would go on live on Facebook, whatever, and speak for 15, 20 minutes, and then cats would hit me the next day. Yo, that was amazing how you spoke. And I'm like, I'm talking about stuff me and Man Man just laugh about, like stuff we, and I, and I think, yeah. and I'm like, <gasps> They don't know. Okay. They don't know. They, they don't know. So the Patreon just came about. It's just basically a private club where, you know, if you can subscribe and you want to support, you come over and I'm answering questions. I'm doing one-on-one yeah. -on -one video chats like what Man Man mm -hmm. and I are doing. That is exclusively for the people that want that opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm posting downloadable show tracks, show arrangements mm -hmm. that I've done for the TLCs, the new additions, the Chris Browns, you know, things that get you guys excited about downloading and playing and checking. You see me and man, but we didn't have all these different opportunities. I'm giving you guys show arrangements. I don't even, I don't even really remember getting <laughs> copies of rehearsal. It's none of that. Like, like if you think about we how did, much work we? we've done, we don't have all the huh. The most well, we have we, shows. No, well, Teddy, we didn't get no rehearsal recordings. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Wow, now that I think about it. Bro, you need- We thought we, we had show recordings. Bro, that's what I'm saying. I, out of all of our years gigging together, all, over all the decades, I may have like three shows with us playing together or something. I, got, I know I only got one, the LA show. The LA? Yeah, I got, I, uh, I got the, the forum. I got the LA forum. I have an Adidas show. Remember when we went over to Teddy with Adidas, and it, 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 and it was all the background singers doing. I things. got that one. I got that one too. Japan. I got that one too. I got yeah, that too. I, I got, got those two. And then I got. Uh, I think we were playing with either Black Street. It might have been Black Street or a guy. And it was. Um, I think my same band. I think myself, you, Sleepy. But it was just we were playing. You know, with with the actual artist at that time. I'll check my iTunes. But yeah, the way we so 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 the way we had to get information. We had notepads, we had pens, we had dictaphones that we were recording to. We didn't have, I mean, if, if Man Man knew about a tape or I knew about a tape, it was just that, a tape. Yo, did you get that George Duke DVD? Did you get that live in concert? Yeah, I was, that was it. Get VHS tape. We, so, was, we was in iTunes sharing. Bro, I, iPhones, iPhones wasn't even out yet. No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, so, it's, so the Patreon is just a place to come and get fed. You can talk to me offline. You have direct access to me, and then I'll be critiquing. I haven't gotten to certain things yet because it's the launch is not even a, it's it's not even a month old yet. It's still just three weeks and something old. I'll get to breaking down video equipment and you know in terms of watching someone uh, play a song and critiquing yep. them live on video so you can see that. I'll get into the things that Man Man and I do the the layering and the sound designing. I mean me and, me and Man Man. I know he's did it with his friends, but we used to have a. Uh, uh, like sheds or battles. Like, it's funny that the verses is going on because me and Man Man used to do that. We'd scroll, 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 and whatever sound you whatever land, sound whatever land on, while we sang, you got to solo. But you got a solo, but I ain't talking about just whipping off your favorite. If you had a flute, you had to solo like a flute. And I'm like, oh! Huh? So Man Man goes crazy like a flute with the, with the articulations of a flute player, and I'm scrolling, and I get something like marimba, and I'm like, yep. <laughs> but now I got to go, 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 go
and that's just how we challenge. Yep. I mean, it trains you sonically, even the feeling in yeah. your fingers that you get. Yep. We were very because I think what it what, I think what it also helped us do. It helped us maintain our independence as players. As players, but it sharpened us far as approach because mm -hmm. you know we had to think different. Like because mm -hmm. you had the you were playing mains, so you had the the classical and like the chords and and I'm and, and then we had uh, uh, uh sweet fingers with Demetrius playing the right. strings, the and, strings the and, mm -hmm. and then I'm just like all right, I gotta just fill in everything <laughs> else, which was like complete opposite thinking of phrasing and you know rhythm going all off the lows, recipes lows, yeah. like you know what I'm saying that was and over the top of everything. You just and you were the key because I felt like we were foundation, me and and sweet fingers, and then you played all the pretty stuff, and it just, you know, still to this day, cats like uh, Keith Sweat or Johnny Gill, they would listen to us play, and they'd be like, sounds like one man. It sounds like a Stevie Wonder type guy. It said, but it, you cease to realize it's three people playing this cohesive part. It, to me, it sounded like when I was learning, like, Floor Tree Show, and I would hear Paris playing something in his left, but soloing in his right or something. Yep. It's that type of vibe that we had where, I mean, it was godly full for it to just be a left hand, but what I'm saying is structurally, we weren't clashing. We weren't – it was such one voice that we had that you could almost mistake it for nowadays it being one keyboard player playing the program. Yep. See, back then, we didn't have stuff in the track. We, had a, we didn't even have a click. We didn't we have, have a click. click. Tell the we story. played a CDJ. <laughs> Yo, people don't understand. They're like, what? We're like, we had three and four, you know, hi-hat count-ins, and we were in. And then we had to listen for a percussion or something in the, in the, in the track that let us stay in time, or either we would just lock on something that the, you know, DJ was, was scratching. But we didn't have teeth talk, talking. Our, we were coming off of wedges. I don't even think we yeah, had ears. No or talk back mics or no, yeah, we had none of that. We didn't even have ears. We was on wedges. Stage was loud as all get up. Yo, but we were just, and that's, and so that's another thing. Let's talk about that. I talk about this on Patreon. Drummers, everyone, don't get so used to the click. Learn how to play without it. To me, even to this day, I hear the click. I hear the click as a percussion. I don't try to lock it. And sometimes if I see a drummer, I'm working with one now that I won't call his name, but it's like, hey, bro, you too stiff. You too up and down. You're that, yeah, don't the, let drum, that the click, click is a guide. That's it. And it was really used for open space. You would have that count in there to kind of keep everything together. Well, when I play with Usher, Valdez is so old school. We would hit a bomb, boom, and then bang. And I'm talking about my piano had to be on with lighting cues and everything else. And I'm looking at Valdez. He's like, you got to feel it. You got to feel it, you know? And so... Those techniques, as old school as it may sound, it helps you really along the way. Because if you're yeah, on the gig and, and once you get to out, the clicks and all that, it just makes it like it oh, makes it okay. <laughs> it makes it like such a second nature. So we talk about see the importance of Patreon and see Man Man and I can get on and talk all day long about this because we have that relationship. I feel like there's a lot of guys that I haven't had the chance of meeting yet, but I know that they do want to learn. So I was like, let me create a neutral place. So if I get the same questions two, three, four, five, six times, I can just talk about it once. Everybody can come and eat and get fed and then do what they will with it. But these are the things yeah. we talk about, playing with the clicks, not playing with the clicks, being a player, being a sound designer, when it's necessary to play, when it's necessary to, to just lay back and play the part. All these different examples of a push-pull type thing so that the magic happens. Like when I listen to you with John, it's such a conversation going on. that I, you, You're holding something, that you may go off and play something pretty, then you come back and catch like, wow, how did he know to do that? I'm like, it's that feeling that you get of just learning what the record needs, what it calls for, knowing your yeah. artist. What, what, what they allow it's like all those different things so basically in a nutshell the patreon is just a school basically that you just come and it's for us and we just we nothing's off limits and then i also i share a few personal stories some that'll make you cry some that'll make you laugh just things that let you know that we're human you know i think yeah cats see you on the transparent. Stage. yeah cats see us on the stage and sometimes they don't know the journey they don't know about the things we went through to get there yeah. so i'm talking about investing your money not spending your per diem. I'm talking about, you know, um, how to go about uh, not being so buddy buddy with the artists that they don't respect you when it's time to negotiate your next, you know, rate because they feel like, okay, I have to respect them as a professional and not a friend. You know, we're talking yep. about your your appearance, your hygiene, you know, how you take care of yourself on the road so that you're appeal because we're 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 on stage as well. And 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 not so much that, but you kind of hit on it with the whole when I get off the stage and I'm on the bus, I have to, that's the same thing with the artists. When you're working closely with them, you're their friends. They, if they want to go to a dinner, if they want to go roller skating, if they want to have you meeting their family, 
it's show business. You have to look the part. They have to feel comfortable enough having you in close quarters, having you. I'm sure you've been one-on-one with John, shoulder to shoulder. He's got to want to be comfortable. He can't be, okay, you're talented, but you look, you know, like you don't have much going. You smell awful. So we talk about all the unwritten rules of just being a professional. People send me yeah, videos all the time. For sure, with, for, for sure with John, I've been put in some of the most <laughs> different positions in life. <laughs> like from a, from from the BET Awards to, to a, a I don't know a club show to, Bro. to the White House to to the Oscars like you know just... oh, oh oh let me speak on this too real quick while you're talking I oh before and I'm just being transparent I was a keyboard guy and man man he helped me with all my rig we'd always sit together and sometimes when we got real good. Like, like he would, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even tell him what I wanted. He'd just be like, when you get to the venue, I'm going to surprise you. And he would set up all these keyboards I didn't order. I'm like, what is all this? He had me looking like Larry Dunn. He's like, don't worry about it. I got you, right? So once Man Man and I, we might have been on a break or something. And I think, I hope you remember this, but Man Man came to Atlanta and played Chastain Park with uh, John. And so Man Man was like, bro, you got to pull up. I'm like, of course. So I come out the house. He takes care of me. I'm at sound check. I didn't just show up at the gig with 15 of my boys. I came just myself, hang with my bro. Well, I'm at sound check. And the first thing he does, he pulls me on stage. He goes, play my roads. It's Scarby. Play my, I'm like, Scarby, what's that? Again, I'm only playing keyboards. I sat down, y'all, and played that Rose. I just looked at him like, <laughs> he was like, yo, can you imagine playing that every night? And so what I'm saying is, long story short, I thank you because one of the most questions that people want to know is when they see me now, especially on the K-pop, they're like, I got the DVD, you're playing keyboards I'm familiar with, but you're not playing sounds I've ever heard came out of those keyboards. I'm like, ah, because you don't see the laptop. Or the, you know what I mean? You don't see the laptop. You don't see what board is MIDI to what. So you're looking at me playing the Jupiter 80, but it's talking to a board that's over here, tilted down. You don't see that. My mains is coming from here. My strings is coming from the laptop. It's so many different things that, so that's also what you learn in the Patreon. Um, it's still a lot of people that's like, well, is, is that Jupiter 80 stronger than the sounds in your laptop? I would think that the Jupiter 80 is faster. I'm like, cool. Plug your phone into your laptop. Watch how fast it charge. Plug your phone into your keyboard. Watch how fast it don't charge. And you're going to see which one has more power. Meaning, when, when, when Man Man and I are playing those pianos out this laptop, those ro- those are hyper sample. That's as close as you're going to get. For the sound cards oh, and different man. things, the synth engines in these keyboards, they have to compress the sounds a bit in order to put it in this package. But with the memory and the power of a laptop, man, you're playing as close as it can get to just having a real baby up there and then when you random, really know random how to question it, look, look <laughs> random question i ain't i don't talk keyboards on this show but i will ask you this have you tried the new phantom no but what what what, what i did do <laughs> is i sat on the phone with valdez brentley for about four hours on facetime zoom thing and he mm-hmm. played just about every patch and the one thing i'm gonna tell you guys and we can get back to just talking regular but the one thing i'm gonna tell you guys about that Val was going through. I mean, I haven't seen it, but he said it's thousands of patches in each bank. I know you know. He was saying, dig, guys, because all of the cool stuff is usually not. Look, look, look. Dig, guys, because all of the cool stuff ain't in the front. It ain't patch number 36, 38. He's like, it's patch 2000. He said, but he said it's tedious. He said, but take the time to go through each bank and every sound. I know Man Man does that all the time because, look, when you're in with these artists and you got to program a sound, it's nothing worse than knowing exactly what it is, but you can't remember where you heard it, where it came from. When you take the time to go through the keys and see what's in it, then you can say, because I've seen Man Man playing boards and people ask me, yo, why is he playing that old XP? And I'm like, you don't know what's in there? Like, you don't know why he's doing that? Well, no, I've never really played it before. You do. I know people who 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 seen you with John, and I think you or somebody, I think you was playing a Fender Rose or something. They were like, why is he, why is he just playing it on the keyboard? And I'm like, you not and that person had never even played a rose before, a real. And I'm like, what? Are we, we come on, young people. Like you've never come played on, a come on. You come on now. But so you know what like, though? I think I think the biggest misperception though is, you know, when you're working with an artist, especially if it's a budget and you're renting backline, you get what you need to do the gig. That's right. This is not a local gig. I don't have to fit everything in to that's two right. keyboards. I don't have that's to. Right. That's right. 
and and with, and with Val, I'm sharing Val because I know he's kind of like an urban legend. A lot of people have heard about him on Usher, but a lot of people haven't got to have access to him, which is another thing I do on my Patreon. I'll be interviewing Man Man as well. I'll be interviewing yeah, Teddy. Yeah, of course, count me in. You know what I mean? I'll be interviewing people that – that's a lot of people that ask me about you. Man, 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 that's your boy. Because they haven't seen me and you together in a long time. They're like, you know man, man from John Legend? I'm like, what are you talking about? His little what? son is my nephew. That's my brother. But it's one of those things, but it's, it's one of those things where – that's why I want to share these stories that you don't get. Like what Val was saying, basically, a lot of these instruments are available. They're at the place and they're available to be ordered, but you just don't think to, you know, you just think to get these keyboards. But a lot of these places have already invested in upright pianos, acoustic pianos, Fender Rhodes, Wurlitzers. Put it on your back line, put it on your wish list. Like you said, this isn't, when you get to the, our level, it's not a local thing. You know, this is the cream of the crop where if that's what you need to be authentic to the record, they're going to make sure you're the production manager, whoever's in charge, they're going to make sure you have that. I, yep. I, I was impressed when I did B.O.B. and he had a song, John Doe, and I was playing on Good Morning America, Queen Latifah. And I'm like, at the time, I didn't have a decent piano library. And I'm like, I don't want to sound like I'm playing a keyboard. You know, I want to be true. And I just threw an upright Yamaha on there, and I'd be doggone. It was one right in the SAR. Yeah. SAR. He I said, like, well, oh. if it's a keyboard or a piano, I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> but you get there, and it's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. So but in a nutshell, that's what Patreon is. We, we kind of kick it like this. I mean, it's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. It's, it's basically when you go over there, I have uh, free things already downloadable, already to ready to yeah, go, yeah, audio yeah. stories, the whole nine. And um, Yeah, it just gives you a direct access with me, uh, emails, the whole nine, um, and then I will feature this as well. Um, like I said, it's yeah, not yeah, even yeah, a month So if y'all haven't subscribed, please come over. Man, man, will be there shortly. Um, a lot of your favorite musicians, and then the off-brand, the, the engineers. The you know, yeah, the, yeah. talking about sonic sound, mixing, blending. Um, yep. The tour managers teaching you about etiquette and being on time, and you know how to get fired. Being the most talented guy in the room, if you haven't took those professional things about, you got to keep. It's one thing to to, to get a gig because you know you're talented. It's another thing to keep it, and that's how you get a career. I always, always tell people, you know, I'm grateful for a lot of the other things I've done, mm -hmm. but I'm more grateful for like the longevity of certain things. Like you know, John, I'm going on you know 15 years. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And it's been nothing but great, you know. And, you know, off script, you know, business-wise, you know, all, everything is in line, you know. And people just, like you said, this relationship is, it's a lot. And people, as you can see, this is my brother, like, for real, for real. Oh, yeah. so we can talk yeah. forever <laughs> and ever and ever. And honestly, I'm looking at the time. My editor about to kill me, but y'all, I think this gonna have to be a part two. We gonna get, we gonna get, we gotta get Omar. We gotta get, we gotta get yeah. everybody up on here and do a whole big family zone too, man, and get a good one in here. Let's do but it, y'all. Stay tuned. Make sure y'all tune into his Patreon. Make sure y'all tune into everything he's doing. Unknown killers. You yeah. might be one of those unknown killers watching. Yeah. Send Let's the go. stuff in. Let's get this thing cracking. Let's That's go. your Thank world. Eugene Man Man Roberts, a.k.a. The Mayor. Town Hall meeting with the man. We out of here. Yeah, deuces. Hope you guys enjoyed that with Young World. Uh, make sure you tune into his Patreon and tune into all the cool things he's teaching. Because, again, that's one of the first people I learned from. That's my bro. Young World. Yeah. Shout out to Roland. Shout out to Igor, Nelly, Kristen. And not last but not least, my brother Joel. Because he's the He's the so, um, until the next time, Eugene Man Man Roberts, a.k.a. The Mayor, and I'm out of here. <laughs> Boom.